AI-powered image generators have become very popular during the past two years. But although they are so widely used, they are still a mystery for most people. In this video, I will give you a deep dive on stable diffusion, which has become one of the most popular tools in this field. It often just takes a simple text prompt to get an amazing image. Or you upload an image, add a text prompt, and get something completely new. And that's what we call generative AI. Generative AI is not just used for image generation, it's a whole set of technologies used for various purposes. First, we have text-to-text -text tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, Mistral, Llama, or Grok. Then we have text-to-image tools like Midjourney, DALL-E, Imagine, Muse, and of course, Stable Diffusion. Then there's text-to-music with Music LM, Music Gen, Stable Audio, and Suno. And finally, text-to-video with Imagine Video, Lumiere, EMU Video, Stable Video Diffusion, and the famous Sora by OpenAI. But how does it all work? First of all, it needs a well-trained model. So in our case, we need the Mona Lisa, right? But in a model trained only with Mona Lisa, all we can generate is Mona Lisa, and that's quite boring. So we also need Albert Einstein. And we need an image description, because we want to generate images from text. But how can we generate something completely new? Well, we need more images. And even more, we need all the images we can get. In fact, Stable Diffusion 1.5 contains more than 2.3 billion image text pairs. But how can they fit into a model with a size of just 2.13 gigabytes? And how can we create totally new images? So what does it take to train a model? We need to get 2.3 billion image text pairs. We need to merge them in a model that's not too big. We need to map the image description to the image or to parts of it. We need to identify similar contents across all images. And we need to extract the characteristics from images in order to create new ones. The image text pairs were scraped from the internet using the Layon 5B dataset. There are still pending legal issues, so some newer models try to avoid copyrighted images. The next big question is, how is the training done? It's done with a method called deep learning. And this is all about neural networks. For stable diffusion, we need two network layers. The first one is the convolutional layer, more about it later. And the second one is called the self-attention layer. May sound funny, but we'll get into it. And both of these layers are closely connected to each other. Now some basic things about neural networks to give you a better understanding. Neural networks consist of neurons which are connected to each other across different layers. We could somehow compare it with the human brain. There's an input layer, one or more hidden layers, and an output layer. And if all neurons from one layer are connected with each neuron of the next layer, it is called a fully connected neural network. There are also weights and biases. Each neural connection has a weight, which determines the strength or influence of the connection. Each hidden layer contains a bias, which is a constant value of 1 and is added to the output. This ensures that there aren't any dead, means 0, outputs. During the training, new values are inserted through the input layer, which changes the weights of the neural connections in the whole network. In easy words, you insert a bunch of numbers into the network which adapts the values of the neural connections. That's called learning. Now we can see images as a grid of pixels with certain color values. So they are also just a bunch of numbers. An image with a size of 512 by 512 pixels and three color layers, red, green, blue, can be stored in some 700,000 neural connections. So using the network for creating a new image would require more than 600 billion neural connections. And there isn't even any spatial information as each input connects to each output. So fully connected neural networks aren't suitable for image generation and we need something different. So let's build a different kind of network where only a small number of input neurons connect with the hidden layer so there are way less connections. That's called a convolutional neural network. 
and the connected regions are called local receptive fields. Here, the weights and biases are the same for all neurons in a specific hidden layer. And that means that all hidden neurons detect the same feature in an image. That means that convolution can extract features from images by using the relationship between adjacent pixels. So a network trained with Einstein can detect him anywhere in an image. Next, let's see how computer vision works. It deals with the question, what is in an image? The first level is the classification of an image. Level 2 is classification plus localization. Level 3 is object detection. And level 4 is semantic segmentation, where the position of each type of object in an image is exactly determined. Now stable diffusion uses the level 4. Let's see how it's done. Let me introduce you to the UNet. It's called UNet because it's shaped like a U. And it consists of several encoder and decoder layers. There are connections from the encoder to the decoder at each level to add data to the decoder. An image is converted to a stream of small pixel tensors, each capturing fine details of the image. These tensors are fed into the encoders. Each block detects more features in the image, and at each encoding step, the image is downscaled to detect a larger part of the image with less details. So at the end of encoding, the UNet knows what's in the image, but not where. At decoding, the image gets upscaled again in order to consolidate the information. The data gathered by the encoder is added to it at each decoding layer. That's been a tough one. Now let's talk about noise. In a step-by-step -step process, more and more noise is added to an input image until there's only noise left. To reduce the size, the image is downscaled before using an autoencoder. That's called latent space. We can say that a noisy image is the original image plus noise. So if we know the noise level, we can subtract it and get back the original image. That's called denoising. So the noising process is reversed and it's also fed into the UNet. Now how can we embed the image descriptions? Let's take the painting of Mona Lisa. The words are converted into a vector, a bunch of numbers. And for that we're using a common list called Word2Vec, where all English words are already listed. And based on all available texts on the internet, Words used in similar contexts have similar vectors. Here's an example for Einstein. And since words are vectors, you can do calculations. For example, king minus man plus woman equals queen. And here we have our self-attention layer. But there's an issue. Look at the phrase, the man killed the dog. It has the same vector as the dog killed the man. So we also need to encode the position of the words. That's called positional encoding. Now let's summarize. An image is encoded to a vector by the convolutional layer. For text we do the same with the self-attention layer. What if we could use the same vector for both of them? That's actually done by the clip encoder and the vector is fed into the UNet. And here we have our trained model. Fortunately, that's all done for us by Stability AI. Now let me quickly show you how to use the model. Just using a simple comfy UI workflow. So we load our model. We enter a positive and negative prompt. We use a clip encoder to turn it into a vector. Then we create an empty latent image, which is just noise, or we can also load an input image instead. But then we also need a VAE encoder to bring it into latent space. Then we need a case sampler for the calculations. Then connect everything and render. Use a VAE decoder to get the image. And we're done. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.